Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce the concepts of the transitive property and substitution. Now, the transitive property, you're familiar with that. You should be familiar with that from your algebra studies, which essentially says if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. That's our transitive property of equality. Um, it's that linking that we did in chains of reasoning as well. So the transitive property for our purposes in geometry will say something like this. We'll use it for both angles or segments. And we'll say if angles or segments are congruent to the same angle or segment, then they're congruent to each other. And for proof purposes, I will let you shorten that to transitive same. So just like we had addition same and subtraction same, uh, we're going to have transitive same. We're also going to have transitive congruent, but that's coming up here in just a minute. So, for example, if I give you, or you are given, let's say angle A is congruent to angle B. And you're also given that angle B is congruent to angle C. So your diagram might look something like this. We have an angle A and an angle B and an angle C. And if I tell you that angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, well, they all have the same tick marks, so we can conclude that angle A is congruent to angle C by the transitive property. Angles congruent to the same angle are congruent to each other. So, as you can see here, angle A and angle C are both congruent to the same angle, angle B. So, our reason here would be transitive. because we're congruent to the same angle, angle B, the same set of points. And just like we had addition congruent and subtraction congruent, we're going to have transitive congruent. And again, this goes for both angles and segments. I think I'm going to do another example of angles. But if congruent angles are congruent to congruent angles or segments, then they are congruent to each other. So we have transitive congruent would be your reason that you would use in proof. So let's say that we're given angle A is congruent to angle B, and we're given that angle C is congruent to angle D, and we're also given that angle A is congruent to angle D. Well, what can we conclude here? There is something we can, can conclude. There's some linking going on. So let's take a look. We've got angle A congruent to angle B. So those are congruent. And we've got angle C and we've got angle C congruent to angle D. So I'm going to use a different tick mark. C is congruent to D. But now we have angle A congruent to angle D. So if angle A is congruent to angle D, they need to have the same tick marks, don't they? So hmm, angle A and angle D have the one slash tick mark. Well, wait a minute. A was congruent to B. So then we can conclude a couple different things. We can conclude that A is congruent to C. And we can conclude B is congruent to C. So angle A is congruent to angle C. Or we could also conclude angle B is congruent to angle C. And our reason here, transitive congruent. Because angles that are congruent to congruent angles are congruent to each other. So, 
our reason and proof. Our reason would be transitive congruent. And finally, substitution. Now, substitution is replacement. So you'll see substitution with things like complements or with doing some adding or subtracting of segments or angles. Okay, we have to be careful with that, but uh, you'll see it with more of an operation, mathematical operation, or with complements or supplements. So let's take a look. If we're given, like, angle 1 is complementary to angle 2, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, we can conclude that angle 1 is complementary to 3. By substitution, that would be our reason, because... If 2 is congruent to 3, we can replace 2, and since these are the same, we can take 3 and we can substitute it in there. We can replace angle 2 with angle 3. That's substitution. We don't know if 1 is congruent to 3, but we do know 1 is complementary to 3. Sometimes students confuse this with complements of congruent angles are congruent. That's not substitution. That's not replacement. Here we're simply replacing angle, through, angle 2 with angle 3. So our conclusion, angle 1, is complementary to angle 3 by substitution. So looks like my PowerPoint has died here, but that's okay. We will go ahead and work on this when I see you in class.